Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the quarterfinals of Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge 2020, the online tournament uh, in rapid time control organized as a part of Magnus Carlsen Tour on platform chess24.com. Uh, and quarterfinals, these are the pairings. So we have Hikaru Nakamura playing against Levon Aronian from Armenia, Magnus Carlsen uh, against Wesley So, Yu Yangi and Ding Liren, so uh, two Chinese players, and Daniel Dubov uh, against Sergei Karyakin, also two Russians in the last pairings. Uh, and today we had uh, two pairings, so we have two matches. Uh, Yu Yangi played against Ding Liren and they had four draws so Ding Liren actually uh, had black and he only needed to draw against Yu Yangi in Armageddon however he controlled the game all the time uh, and he had a totally winning position actually that was forced checkmate in 12 moves uh, but Ding Liren didn't pre-move played very precise to the end and and he just got flagged and Yu Yangi won the first match. Yes, first match because uh, each quarterfinal pairing contains three matches uh, where we have these four games and Armageddon if needed. So uh, Ding Liren is not knocked out yet from the tournament. He still uh, has a chances to, uh, to stay in the tournament. He just need to win another two uh, matches. So uh, that's the one pairing from today. And we also had uh, Hikaru Nakamura and Levon Aronian. And Levon Aronian actually managed to win first game. Uh, then we had the two draws and then Hikaru Nakamura uh, won in the fourth game. So also Armageddon uh, gonna decide who gonna, you know, uh, win this mini match. And that is the game I would like to show you today. So we have uh, Hikaru Nakamura, his rapid ranking 2829 and that's number 4 ranking in the world and he's gonna play as black. And we have also Levon Aronian, Armenian Grandmaster, his ranking 2778, number 8 in the world and he's gonna play as white. So without further ado, let's jump on the board. Uh, we have C4 by Aronian and E5. So English opening king's english variation now we have knight on f3 knight c6 knight on c3 knight f6 so uh, we actually seen that already a uh, couple of times in this tournament we have g3 and now d5 uh, c takes on d5 knight takes on d5 by nakamura and now bishop on g2 uh, and here knight on b6 is the most popular move which hikaru nakamura played uh, preserving the both of the knights as we know hikaru nakamura loves the knights uh, and now we have castle uh, bishop on e7 also preparing to castle and now d3 uh, we have castle bishop on e3 and it looks pretty strange for this bishop to be developed in the front of the pawn but with this pawn structure actually uh, white not gonna move the the e2 pawn uh, at least for now. Uh, we have bishop on e6 and now normal move in this position is rook on c1. That's the regular development. However, we have queen on d2 connecting the rooks and here Levon Aronian has a very interesting idea uh, because after knight on d5 he play rook f on c1. So uh, he can now move the queen back to, the, uh, to his starting position if needed uh, but also he plays on the queen side for now. Now. We have f6 now, strengthening the uh, the pawn on e5, as this is usually very weak pawn. Uh, and here, knight on d5 was played, is the most popular move in this position. And then bishop c5, exchanging this dark square bishop. That is the idea uh, in this opening. However, Levon Aronian play knight on a4, and it was not played on the top level before. Uh, and now what is the idea? He want to exchange this bishop as he don't want to the bishop be exchanged uh, on e3. For now the queen uh, can take it of course, uh, but it would be uncomfortable if the queen cannot move. So that's the idea. First uh, exchange this uh, not really great bishop on the uh, e3 square. Uh, we have rook on e8 by Nakamura and now bishop c5 as planned. Uh, and Nakamura say, okay, we can exchange the bishops, but maybe on d6. 
Uh, the point is, uh, if the bishop is exchanged, Nakamura can take with the queen, but he also can take with the pawn, uh, strengthening the center, but also making the pawn structure symmetrical, and that's, you know, he needs only a draw to win the match. So, uh, symmetric pawn structure is not in favor of Levon Aronian, definitely. So, Levon plays a3 uh, with the idea of b4, uh, but Hikaru first plays knight on b6. No, so, now attacking the knight, uh, which is unprotected, uh, and here, of course, Levon could go for knight takes on b6, but actually, it favors black to exchange all these pieces uh, without any compensation, because black only needs a draw. So, uh, we have queen on d1, defending the knight, and now if Hikaru wants to, you know, take the knight, that actually would not, you know, be good for him, just exchange the pieces, and now uh, white have a lot of pressure on the on the knight, also the rooks can be doubled, so uh, that would be some problem for, for black, so definitely not the great idea. We have bishop on d5 now, bringing the defender to c6, but also uh, playing against the bishop on the longest diagonal. And as Levon uh, cannot exchange uh, the dark square bishop on his uh, terms, then he just retreat. Bishop on e3. Uh, we have now bishop on f8, also retreating, and now b4 as planned. Uh, now we have knight on d4, creating very nice outpost, uh, and now bishop d4. So exchanging uh, this bishop, which is pretty weak in this position uh, for the knight. Uh, we have e takes on d4, and now knight c5, very nice outpost for the knight. Also attacking b7 which is defended now for once but if it's exchanged with the bishop then uh, white actually could win the pawn also another plan for white uh, is of course taking the the pawn on d4 with double attack with the with the knights so uh, we have rook on b8 defending b7 pawn and now knight b3 as planned uh, so now black has to decide how to defend the pawn and actually they have to eliminate the one of the knights so we have bishop on f3 and now e takes on f3 so Levon tries to create some majority on the king side with the pawns just to give, you know, some uh, some chances to win. Uh, we have c3, now defending against this diagonal and also this uh, semi-open file. Now this c6 pawn is a great blocker here. Uh, we have f4, now unleashing the bishop, but as, as I said, it's not in the full power because of this c6 pawn. And now we have knight on a4 by Hikaru. Nakamura. So he definitely wants to go to c3. How to defend c3? As this knight would be very, very annoying uh, with some ideas, you know, of jumping to, to e2 uh, and winning the exchange. And as white doesn't have the dark square bishop anymore, this is definitely the job for the knight. So knight have to do something. We have knight on d2 with the plan of knight on e2 for a, an attacking the knight. We have knight on c3 with attack on the queen, queen b3 with tempo on the on the king, so king on h8. And now this is of course not ready yet to play knight on e4 because this is still a threat. This is very serious threat. So we have rook on e1 first, queen on d7 and only now knight on e4. We have knight on e4 and here in this position d takes on e4. So Levon Aronian let actually Hikaru Nakamura to have this um, this passed pawn. Uh, however, he thinks, okay, it's not gonna be very strong. Maybe I can take it, but at the same time, I gonna have these five pawns, uh, which can do something on the king side against three pawns of Hikaru. So that's my chance. Uh, we have c5, b takes on c5, and now bishop takes on c5, bringing some protection to the pawn on d4. We have bishop on f1, now with the idea of blocking of d3, and that's what Hikaru Nakamura told, and he said in the interview after that he just missed another move. He played g6, actually blundering badly, but not very badly, as we know, because bishop b5, it's actually skewering the, the queen and gonna win the exchange. However, luckily for Hikaru, he still have queen on e6. And now the queen is undefended. 
so we have bishop on c4 of course the queen cannot be taken because uh, just just normal exchange and it again it favors black so uh, we have bishop on c4 and now queen on d6 moving the queen behind the the past pawn uh, we have king on g2 by levon aronian and now rook on e7 queen on f3 now bringing the queen to help the pawns on the attack and look at this attack that's gonna be massive attack on the king side we have rook b on e8 uh, and now h4 so the storm is coming a6 now preparing b5 uh, and here actually uh, bishop on d5 would be okay that would be a pretty good move however uh, we have a4 a4 actually the pawn on a3 actually controls b4 which was uh, pretty handy uh, for white uh, however now Hikaru Nakamura immediately jumps on b4 attacking the, the rook we have rook on e2 and now queen on c6 moving the queen uh, on the same diagonal with the queen so the idea of course is to exchange the queens uh, and now bishop on d3 would be probably the best move here so for, for example bishop on d3 and now if f5 simply e5 uh, can exchange the queens in this case but having this passed pawn protected passed pawn and also uh, still having these three pawns against these two uh, it's really really great um, chance for white to actually win the game uh, and also if black don't play f5 and try to play for example queen on c3 with the attack on the rook uh, then simply rook b1 could be very very strong uh, and this attack is gonna be continue and uh, and white gonna have very comfortable game and black achieve nothing here but Levon didn't go for the for the bishop on d3 he goes for some move which looks much better uh, bishop on d5 it looks good uh, because it also watching at b7 however this actually uh, gives the opportunity to exchange the queens to Hikaru without you know losing any any other benefits from his position and he played queen on c3 attacking the rook and also forcing to exchange um, the queens uh, we have rook on d1 moving the rook in the front of the of the pawn and now queen on f3 king on f3 and bishop c3 solidifying this position uh, we have rook on b1 uh, by levon aronian and now rook on d8 and here is quite important position uh, what white should play is rook on c2 and white still stands much better now f5 is not the problem e5 of course is not possible because the the bishop would hang but now h5 just continue the attack and now even f takes on e4 bishop e4 and white are completely fine okay white are completely fine here uh, the pawn cannot be be pushed because of the rook takes on c3 so everything is fine and also white starts to win on the on the king side so definitely that was the great idea however levon wants to block the pawn now but now it's too late because after bishop on c4 hikaru nakamura has different plans for his pawn and he played d3 uh, and again this is already uh, not easy position for white uh, rook on d1 should be played because now rook cannot be taken because uh, of this pin uh, and then black would just lose this pawn that's the only good pawn uh, in black's position now so black just have to take care of this pawn very very much so uh, d2 would have to be played and after rook on e3 bishop a5 white cannot proceed what's the idea how to now stop this bishop is you know uh invisible it's it cannot be attacked because white just doesn't have you know minor pieces which could attack the dark square so maybe rook on d3 but it also gives nothing that's just a you know probably draw but after d3 levon aronian didn't go for rook on d1 he played rook on e3 and actually hikaru nakamura had the chance uh, to play rook on d4 winning the exchange 
Uh, because now bishop is under attack and after bishop on d3, bishop d2 would be very very strong winning the exchange. Uh, because if the rook is moved then of course the bishop is hanging. So after reinforcing the bishop then simply bishop e3, uh, rook a4 and black stands better here. Just have to watch out on this you know 5 pawns against these 3 pawns but it's still much better for black. But of course, if you are short in time, you choose the, the easiest solution. So we have d2. d2 uh, with the idea, of course, promoting. Uh, bishop cannot be taken because, because of this promotion. And now black stands uh, better again. However, white have one extra pawn, but it's still better for black. So we have bishop on d5. Now cutting this pawn uh, from the support of the rook. Uh, we have bishop on a5 as now bishop is under attack and it can be taken very easily so we have bishop on a5 and now this bishop is very happy here uh, controlling d2 pawn and this pawn can't be removed. But this is also interesting moment of the game because here Hikaru in the interview after uh, he told f5 f5 and I'm winning. Because now if rook takes on c3, I don't need to worry about this bishop because after I have f takes on e4 with check. And now after bishop on e4, I just promote and I win the game. This is so uh, so good for, for me. Much easier game. Uh, he was just partially right because uh, white actually could play king on e2. Uh, and after rook on d5... Uh, rook on d1 win this pawn actually and uh, it can't really be defended so this is possible of course everything but then rook d on d2 however this is everything how do you think who gonna win this this ending that is a good question you can try to calculate uh, but i'm just telling you that black has only one move which gives a draw all other moves are losing and the drawing move is b4 making uh, one extra tempo against the king now the king has to go around okay uh, and after king on c2 we would have king on g7 king b3 king f6 uh, and look at this this is just you know uh just enough for the draw uh white have to now now wait uh and now and now probably f5 and this is just a theoretical draw. So uh, black never gonna promote and that's a draw. But draw was also good for Hikaru Nakamura. Uh, so he actually could go for, for uh, f5. Uh, that, that could be also awesome idea. But he moved the bishop to a5, which is also okay. We have king on e2 now, uh, bringing the king closer to the promotion as white have to watch at the at the promotion square and now we have rook on c7 threatening rook c1 and you know winning the rook or uh, making a promotion so we have rook on d1 and now rook on c1 uh, doesn't work uh, because white of course don't need to take it and the rook is uh, defended uh, we have b5 a takes on b5 a takes on b5 and now hikaru creates another pass pawn uh, we have g4 so this is the level chance uh, to attack with the with the pawns on the king side uh, we have now bishop on c3 as the c3 is controlled now by the rook uh, and now bishop on b3 uh, and b4 solidifying this position and this is actually very very annoying the bishop now stops um, the pawn b pawn from marching uh, but it still has a pretty nice position uh, but it's gonna be enough or not uh, we have g5 by Levon Aronian, f takes on g5, h takes on g5 and now we have these four pawns, uh, already the past pawn, uh, against these two pawns. Uh, we have rook on f8, now attacking the pawn, uh, rook on f3 defending and now rook e7 attacking this pawn. So we have e5, king on g7 uh, and now e6 as, as the pawn is defended as well. Uh, we have h6 and now uh, not much choice uh, because the pawn actually can go to h5 and that's gonna be uh, not really great. So we have g takes on h6, king takes on h6 and now rook on g1. So now attacking on the king side. Uh, we have rook on f6 going for the pawn uh, and also defending g6 if needed. And now what to play? 
what to play as white you cannot defend extra defend the pawn because your pawn on f4 is hanging uh, so we have rook f on g3 uh, rook e on e6 and now after bishop on e6 rook e6 with check uh, rook on e3 and now rook f6 attacking the pawn on f4 rook on e4 defending and here king on g7 so all is good in this position there are no much chances for white actually to break through uh, with these two pawns uh, this was you know five pawns against three pawns but as you see at the end uh, we had not really comfortable position uh, and here white just trying to do something maybe about this bishop because that's the only last chance so we have rook on c4 and what is the idea if black plays something like you know uh, rook on f7 uh, then we would have something like rook on g3 uh, rook on d7 just trying to promote on d1 which is the the main threat here but king d1 just stops it uh, and now after king on f6 just exchange that annoying uh, pawns and now win this pawn the problem is it's still a draw because black gonna take this pawn and uh, and that's just a draw so uh, it would not work but at least uh, levon aronian try and play rook on c4 however there is one move which is actually crushing and black gonna play it. did you find this move uh, rook on e6 with check and in this position Levon Aronian resigned the game and he cannot do anything here he cannot do anything here the point is rook is coming to e1 uh, and then promo to the queen and win the game uh, and if we have king on d1 doesn't matter because actually this bishop uh, protects the queen the promotion square uh, so that would be winning this is why after rook on e6 levon aronian had to resign the game so congratulations hikaru nakamura actually won his first mini match but as i said uh, there are still two mini matches so levon aronian is still in the tournament he gonna play uh, against uh, in two days however tomorrow we have magnus carlsen wesley so and Daniel Dubov against Sergei Karyakin also very very exciting games so if you don't want to miss them press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one